Sami from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Sheikh, uh, my question is, uh, what's the ruling regarding giving uh, adhan in the year of a newborn? I checked in a couple of places. In books from Dar es Salaam, it says you should give on Islamic Q&A. It says you should give. But one sheikh from University, uh, Medina University, he told me that this is based on Daif Hadith, and it's better not to give adhan. Can okay. you please share your opinion on this? I will, inshallah. I will. Okay. Any more questions? Would you do? Okay. Brother Sami from Pakistan is asking about the issue of giving the adhan in the right ear of a newborn. And this was mentioned as a prophetic sunnah. And uh, um, Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on his soul, mentioned it in um, his book about the newborn. And a lot of the scholars mentioned it. But as you know, as Muslims, we have foundations to go back to. And these foundations are the Qur'an, which is fixed and known and cannot be altered or changed. And then there is the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which completes, which explains, which elaborates and clarifies a lot of the Qur'an. However, the Sunnah, there is what is authentic and there is what is not authentic. And what is not authentic is graded into a number of different categories. Among them, among them is the fabricated, al mawdur or that is a blatant lie, al makthub or that it is not at all related to reality, such as al batil There is da'if jiddan, very weak. There is da'if weak. And this is an issue of ishtihad among scholars of hadith. Therefore, if you come to such an issue as giving the adhan in the newborn ear, it has to be reported to us through an authentic hadith. And when we cross-examine the narrations and the chain of narrators, and we look into what the scholars of this science have judged it to be, we find that they say it is not authentic. And there is also another addition to it where you give iqama in the left ear. And also this is not authentic. Hence, when we come to such a conclusion, as Muslims, we do not depend and rely on what the scholars say if they speak in something that is not their profession. So if I know that this sheikh is he is uh, uh, speciality is in tafsir and his knowledge is so vast and huge in tafsir but he admits himself that I'm not good in fiqh so if he gives me a fatwa whether halal or haram I may refrain and think twice and if he grades the hadith to be authentic or not authentic I also may um, think twice before accepting his verdict Likewise, in fiqh, when a scholar is an expert in fiqh, he knows all the different opinions of the scholars, and he knows how we reach this verdict or ruling, where did we stem it from, what are the qawaid al-fiqhiyya al-kubra, what are the usul al-fiqh applied to it, the different schools of thought. MashaAllah, he's excellent. However, when it comes to the tafsir of ayah, he may not have that knowledge. So I may refrain in, in learning from him in tafsir. Or when it comes to grading a hadith, whether it's authentic or not, as we have here in this issue, then I also may refrain from that. So when I, we go to the scholars of hadith, the specialists in this science, they tell us that the hadith is not authentic, and this is the correct opinion. That this is not a sunnah, you should not do it, and... Our religion is based on authentic hadiths. So there's no need to say that it's not harmful to do it. Yes, it is not harmful to do it, but if it, was, if it were a part of our religion, it would have been backed by an authentic hadith, and it is not, and Allah knows best. Hiba from Qatar. 